All right, in the first video, we talked about what's on the screen here in the first video of factoring and factoring trinomials. Um, we talked about how to factor these, and so we're going to take this to another level in this video, except let's just quick review how we did these. So we know that the factors of this polynomial are going to have x and x because we've got to get x squared. And then the thing we talked about is we know that it has to multiply up to negative 40. So what numbers multiply up to 40? Well, 1 and 40, 2 and 20, uh, 4 and 10, 5 and 8, and I believe that's it. So uh, if it's mu multiplying to negative 40, I know that one of these numbers has to be negative and one positive. So we are going to be using 4 and 10, where 10 is negative and 4 is positive. And the reason why, just a quick refresher, is because when we multiply 4 times x, we get 4x. And we multiply x times negative 10, we get negative 10x. When you combine those like terms, you get negative 6x. All right, so the answer, if you're curious what the answer is, is this thing right here, x plus 4 times x minus 10. All right, let's look at the next one. To get x squared, we need x times x. And then the factors of 22 are 1 and 22, 2 and 11, and that's it. So we know it's going to multiply to negative 22. That means one of these has to be negative and one positive. We want it to add to 9, so it's going to be plus 11, negative 2. <clears throat> so x minus 2, x plus 11. If you're wondering how do you know which order they go in, it doesn't matter. If you put x plus 11, x minus 2, that would be the same thing. Okay, last one. Factors, well, we know it's going to be x and x. We're looking at what are the factors of 45. So 1 and 45. Let's see, 5 and 9. 3 and 15, and I think that's it. If I'm missing any, it doesn't matter because the answer is already here. So we know it has to multiply to positive 45, but add to negative 14. So we're going to have negative 5 and negative 9. When we do negative 5 times negative 9, we get positive 45. When we add negative 5x and negative 9x, we get negative 14x. So our factors are like so. Okay, so this is, once again, just a review of how to factor trinomials. But this is where a equals 1. And what I mean by a equals 1 is in a trinomial, it's always in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And so a is just referring to that number in front of x squared. So that number in front of x squared in all of these is, is 1. Not, I mean, it looks like I wrote 0. I should probably be more clear there. But there's nothing in front of x squared. So there's just an assumed 1 in front of all of these. So that was the trick for finding the factors when a equals 1. So in this video, a is not equal to 1. Notice here how a equals 2 and a equals 3 in these two examples. So what we're going to do first is we're going to, you know, once again, if you're taking notes, I'd encourage you to pause, write this stuff down, and then replay it. So what we're going to do first is we are going to factor out a greatest common factor first. And so what I mean by that is if you notice in the first example, we have 2x squared. We have 8x, and we have 6. And so what number is a factor of each of those numbers? And so in this case, it would be 2. And so when I say factor out, a lot of times I, I encourage my students to think of this as undistributing. And so people are really good at the distributive property. And so we're basically just going the other way. We're pulling that 2 out. And so what would be left over? Well. To get 2x squared, we need just an x squared, because 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 
to get 8x, we would need a 4x here. And then to get 6, we would need a 3. So basically all you're doing is you're dividing everything by 2 when you're factoring it out. But you can also think of it as undistributing. I don't know if that's a word, but we'll go with it. So now what we're going to do is we are going to take that new trinomial after we factored out that 2, and we're going to factor that. So x times x is going to give me x squared. And I want to look at what are the factors of 3. Well, not too bad, just 1 and 3. And does that add up to 4 in the middle? It sure does. So it's going to be x plus 1 x plus 3. So your answer to this is 2 times x plus 1 times x plus 3. All right, so once again, just to summarize, we're going to factor out that leading coefficient. In this case, it was a 2. Uh, this happens to be the greatest common factor, and then whatever's left over, you factor that stuff. So let's pull out a 3 here, because 3 goes into 12 and 36 as well as 3, <coughs> excuse me. So this will be x squared, and then minus, so 3 times what is going to give me 12? Well, that'd be 4, so 4x there. And then 3 times what is going to give me 36? So that's going to be 12, or minus 12 in this case. All right. So now we're going to factor what's left over here. We're going to keep that 3 out in front because that's still part of this. And let's look at the factors of 12. We've got 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. Kind of running out of room here. I can scroll down. So will any of these combinations give me negative 4 in that middle term? Well, if I do negative 6 and positive 2, that's going to give me negative 4. And I'm looking for factors that uh, of negative 12. So I, I need one of those to be negative. So that means that our factors are going to be x plus 2, x minus 6. And this will be our factored answer. All right. Let's look at a couple more examples. What I encourage you to do is pause it here, try them on your own, see if you can do it without my help, and then hit play and see if you got them right. You can even fast forward a little bit to see if you got the right answer, and then if you didn't, rewind and have another stab at it. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, on this one, we've got a 4, a 44, and a 96. So I'm going to pull a 4 out of each of those. So 44 divided by 4 is 11. And 96 divided by 4, well, I know 100 divided by 4 is 25. And that's just one less 4, so this has to be 24. And so I'm going to look at what are the factors of 24. We've got 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for some numbers that will add up to negative 11. So I am going to choose negative 3 and negative 8. Because when we multiply those, we get positive 24. When we add them, we get negative 11x. So this is going to end up being 4x minus 3, x minus 8. All right, so that's going to be our factored answer. And just a, a reminder on this, that if we multiply this stuff out, so if you do, you know, like the, the box method like we talked about in the previous video or the FOIL method we kind of talked about, if you multiply this all out, it's the exact same thing as what we started with. All we're doing is we're just writing it a different way. So these two expressions are identical. They're just written in a different way. Okay. Um, another example. This one's a little bit easier because it's all factors of 10, so dividing by 10 is not too bad. 40 divided by 10 is 4, and 210 divided by 10 is 21. So let's take a look at what are the factors of 21. <clears throat> 1 and 21, 3 and 7, and I need 
it to multiply to negative 21. So one's got to be negative, one's got to be positive. And it's got to add to negative 4. So negative 7, positive 3. So this is going to end up being 10, and then x plus 3, x minus 7. And there's our factored answer. All right. So last example we're going to talk about is what about something like this, where it's just a negative out in front? How do we handle that? So think about this for a second. What would you do? Um, you could try factoring it, but the problem is we can't use our trick of, of multiplying to 40 and adding to negative 3 because this is a negative x squared. So what could you do instead? Well, what I would do, and, and there's a couple different approaches you could take, is I would take out a negative 1. And so everything's going to get divided by negative 1. This will end up being x squared, and then plus 3x, and then minus 40. So um, you want to get that x squared to just have a coefficient of 1. And so what we can do here is kind of cheat the system, and we can figure out how we can just divide everything by negative 1. All right, so factors of 40. 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 4 and 10, 5 and 8. And so we're looking for something that will give me positive 3x. And it looks like it would be the last one here, negative 5 and positive 8. Those will multiply to negative 40, and they'll add to positive 3x. So our final factored answer is x. I messed up there, but we'll make it work x plus 8, x minus 5. Like I said, it doesn't matter which order you write them in. All right, so this is factoring trinomials with the greatest common factor. That would be kind of the title of this whole lesson.